Bradley, and hello to everyone tuning in. Welcome to The Logic Show. I want to apologize for that technical difficulty that I just had. Uh, still got a new computer, and I was trying to get a new uh, streaming configuration set up, so that was just a little bit, a little bit weird. Um, anyhow, so... Welcome to The Logic Show. My name is Justin Beck, a.k.a. Lewis Beck. I also go by the artist name Sylvan Paul. So however many, uh, whichever name you want to call me by is cool. Um, if you're here, please lob in a little greeting into the chat so I know that you're there. It's always nice to not be alone in the cold, desolate universe. Um, anyhow. For those of you joining us for the first time, uh, The Logic Show is a show on 343TV, and 343TV is a uh, branch of a music production school here in New York City called 343 Labs, and I am an instructor at that school, and um, we focus on electronic music production, and um, we teach Logic, Ableton, mixing, mastering. Uh, we have a new cool course that's about uh, electronic music composition and I also helped create a course called uh, Vocal Production Course. And I'm sure I'm leaving a couple things out. Um, yeah, man. Yes, Josh Miles. <laughs> Universe is really cold. <laughs> and hello, John Kingston. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, so, you know, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If this is not your first time tuning in, welcome back. And uh, if you're not subscribed to our channel and you have already, you know, been watching, please, please subscribe. Got a lot of awesome content on there. And then, um, you know, if you this is your first time here and you're, you know, waiting to see what the deal is, well, if you get to the end of the show and you dig what we're doing, then I, you know, again, please subscribe. Anyhow, so what we're going to be doing or what I'm going to be doing today is actually based on a request that someone had last time and that was to sort of explore logics sorry excuse me I'm adjusting my microphone it's to explore the uh, new sampler in logic which is a really really powerful tool that is very very helpful and useful but definitely a little bit intimidating I think the first time you open it if you're not familiar with the kind of um, you know, structure of samplers, or if you've never come from Ableton. So to that very point, right, what sampler is, let's just open it up real quick, is, you know, to be completely transparent, it is logic trying to make up ground against Ableton in terms of like, you know, built in production tools. Uh, so in Ableton, all right, dope, Josh. Yeah, so I heard you, and that's what we're doing. Um, and so, yeah, so basically the sampler is, um, like I was saying, it is realistically sort of like a challenge, you know. They're throwing down the gauntlet to Ableton in terms of their sampler and simpler, uh, insofar as this really allows you to now sample audio and warp audio not warping in the Ableton term, but you know, just the generalized term, uh, and really start manipulating audio in a much more advanced way than was formerly possible in, in Logic. And so this, while you might be looking at this going, how on earth is this a sampler, right? This just looks like a kind of like screwed up synthesizer. Um, the way it works is you literally just drag in a sample from a sample library or, you know, from a, uh, an audio file anything like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump into my samples and I'm going to show you how to use this thing at first for making uh, 808s, right? Because I really think that that's one of the main things that this excels at um, and that really that like contemporary samplers are, are, are useful for. Um, and one of the reasons I want to also go over this is that, you know, if you can make your own 808s, um, a, it'll sound more unique than just like splice loops or, you know, loop masters loops or wherever it is that you're getting your stuff from. And uh, B, it's also going to make it so that you can realize your own musical vision uh, more accurately, right? So I'm a big believer in sound design. I'm a big believer 
in uh, tone building so that you know you can get that picture in your head out onto the page so to speak all right so i'm going to come into my 808 kit and i'm going to look for a kick that is very boomy that's not it that's definitely not it that's not that's closer very close That's a pretty nice one. So literally all I'm going to do is drag the sample into here, right? You don't have to drag it, grab it. Ah. You don't have to drag it and drop it anywhere in particular, which is really great, right? So you really can't screw it up. All you have to do is drag an audio file into here. And as you see, what happens is you're automatically directed, redirected to your mapping and zone screen, right? So if I turn off zone, then this whole area is going to go away, All right? Now, if I turn off mapping, then that whole area is going to go away. And so actually what the way that this functions is you can scroll up and down through these areas, or you can just click on them to get to the different ones. So it's really just a matter of your own, you know, preferences and your own workflow. Um, I personally, for whatever reason, have already just decided in my brain that it's impossible to scroll up and down. So I click back and forth between these. Um, like I said, really just depends on how your brain works. So the first thing to understand about this, right, is that you have your sample right here. So before we do anything, right, the, the most important thing to really understand about this is the relationship between your keyboard and this sampler. So as you can see, right, you have your different octaves. You have your piano roll, just a normal piano. And it's telling me that this, this, what this yellow line is telling me is that my root version of the sample, right? So my completely unaltered version of this sample, like the thing that I heard directly from Splice or from my sample library, or, you know, if it's a, a song that I'm sampling, the just like totally undestructed version, unadjusted version is on C1. And I can move that if I want by coming right here and just dragging it around. So for whatever reason, you don't want your sample to fall on C1, let's say you want it to fall on C2. You can drag it over to C2, right? So for my, for my case right now, it's actually easier if I drag it to C2, just for my reach to my keyboard. So I'm going to do that. Now what I also can do is if I hover over either of these yellow lines in either direction, I can drag out a range in which I could play tuned up and tuned down versions of the sample. So. Right? Hey, what's going on, Regine? Welcome. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so, right, as you can hear, what this allows me to do is cycle up between octaves. Now, for an 808, I don't really think I need to get any higher than an octave up and any lower than an octave down. Usually, I'm probably going to be chilling in a range of like a perfect fifth in either direction, right? So, probably from, from A to A, essentially. Oh, sorry, G to G, if I'm starting on C. So the next most important thing to talk about is this right here, okay? This area where it says play. So I don't know if you, I don't think you can see this, but I'm going to be very, very obvious about the way that I am triggering this. So I'm going to go like this and pull up, all right? So as you can hear, The longer I hold my finger down, the longer that the sample is going to play for, right? In terms of its duration. Now, if you want that, right? If you specifically want to make it so that the sample doesn't play its full cycle every time that you click it, and there are a lot of reasons for that, right? Let's say you have like a vocal sample and you want to like do little chops, like, ah, 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 I want it, ah, 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 I want, I want it, right? Stuff like that. So, you know, that way what you can do is you can program your MIDI to be certain lengths or you can just play it, you know, so that it actually responds, you know, 
time wise to to the way you're triggering the sample now for my purposes for this particular exercise if you want to call it or application i'm going to put it onto one shot mode and what this means is that no matter how long i click it for it's going to play the entire duration of the sample so i again for what i'm currently doing this makes more sense now the thing that i'm going to do is I'm also like this 808 lasts way too long. And yeah, welcome Chroma Beats as well. So this is my editing area in terms of shortening my loop, right? So let's say, for instance, the start of my loop, right? I, let's just for argument's sake, say I don't want it to start right there. Maybe I drag in something that has a little bit of, you know, uh, silence. I would drag this. Or is I going to start it later? Now, if I want to shorten the length of it, right, which is exactly what I'm going to do now, I just take here and I drag. So I'm going to want it to end like right there. Now, I'm going to try to purposely go to a spot where it clicks and it makes it make a makes a cut. So that's bad, right? We do not want that audio cut. Now, in now, how do I zoom in with a mouse? I was always doing this with my, hmm. All right, let's see. That's not doing it. Uh, option, uh, no, shift, no. Okay, so I actually have not used this on my new computer yet, which I just got. So if you're using a laptop, what you would do is, is you would just go like that, right, to zoom in. Um, maybe a view, but I'm using a mouse, so I'm not entirely sure how to zoom in. That's okay, because I don't need to, but the point is, is that if you don't set it perfectly at a zero crossing at this point, right, which basically is just a spot where the wave is neither above or below, right, so where it's just right on the line in terms of positive phase and negative phase, or really you can think about it as hearable, you know, hearable sound or silence, um, then it's going to get this clicking sound if you're not on a, on a uh, this one you're hearing, right? And we don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fade out and turn it a little bit longer. And so what that'll do is, is it'll get rid of the click, the click. So that's a really important thing. So just to quickly review, right? You drag in the sample then you set the the range of right of where you want it to be playing or the logic is calling it the zone and then you're going to decide whether or not you want it to be in one shot mode or you want it to be in you know trigger mode and then you're going to edit the length of the sample if necessary and if you get a clicking sound on the fade out right or on the end of the sample rather you can create a fade so the other thing you can do of course is you could reverse the sample which is really cool. Now, of course, I would have to do an opposite fade if I wanted. Really long one. Come on. That's good enough. But I don't need to do that right now anyway. So I'm going to pull that back to zero and I'm turn off reverse. And that's cool. We're in business. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create beat by triggering Whoa, that's huge. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, and this is actually really important, is if I want to move up and down key ranges, right, I'm going to have to click this on, which is going to basically make it so that the, the length of the sample does not 
get faster or slower based on if I'm rising or falling, you know, respectively going up or down in pitch, right? So the way that it works is that if you make something uh, higher in pitch, it starts going faster, right? And we actually can know that because if you look at a uh, EQ, right, or just the way that that hertz works, that frequencies work, right? The faster they're cycling, the higher pitch they are. The lower they're cycling, the lower pitch they are, right? So just a fun little fact to demonstrate that, right, everything is connected in music production, right? None of these ideas stand alone out of context from other areas. All right. So anyhow, the point is, is that you turn on the uh, follow tempo button, which is also, as you probably can see, is the same icon as the flex tool. So it's basically just flexing it for you. So I'm feeling that note, which isn't an A, most likely. I doubt that this that this kick is tuned to C, but we can figure out what that is in a second. I actually don't like that, so too fast. So as some of you may know who have either taken a class with me or have tuned into my prior uh, logic streams, I love the shift R key command, right? What that is, it's called MIDI capture. So basically it allows me to be playing on a MIDI track that is armed, right? So that it's receiving MIDI information. And as long as it is armed and the dial is moving, right? across the arrangement, then I am able to literally play whatever I want and it's going to record it like theoretically, essentially, right? It's not gonna record if I don't ask it to record, but if I press shift, press shift R, what it does is, is I say, hey Logic, I know you were spying on me in terms of my MIDI and uh, I want you to tell me what I was just playing. That was the best, closest take. I'm gonna come in here. I'm just gonna quantize everything. Now there's a couple ways that I can make this work a little bit better for me. So first of all, I'm gonna come over here to velocity. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna turn, I actually don't want there to be any velocity sensitivity on these at all. I want these to be 100% all of them, right? So I'm gonna click here in my velocity area, raise all of them. To 127. Why is it not letting me do this? Let me zoom in. What? Oh, sorry. Thank you. There we go. What the fuck? Okay. Sorry. The logic update still gets me sometimes. So I'm just gonna set the velocity so that it's only in the range of 127. So literally only will be triggered. It's only gonna be triggered if I play a, a note that has a velocity of 127. So what that allows me to do is make sure that everything is hitting super hard.
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get rid of I want to get rid of that click. Sorry, excuse me. I want to get rid of that click at the start of the sound. So, some of you might be thinking, well, you should just adjust the fade at the beginning. But that doesn't quite solve my problem. I actually want to still get the full velocity. I'm not just going to say velocity, that's misleading. I want to get the full amplitude of the start of the kick drum, the transient, but just slightly smear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my synth section, and I'm simply going to come into my uh, amplitude envelope and turn my attack up a little bit. And there we go. So right there, about 2.5. Pretty crazy how 2.5 milliseconds. Okay, great question, Regine. No, so the BPM is not the same as the velocity. Rather, the velocity is not the same as the BPM. What velocity is, is it's the intensity which, which we, with which we are pressing the note, right? So MIDI is, is the information that we use to sort of imitate the process of live instrumental music playing. And so in order to imitate that process, it has this function called uh, velocity. And what velocity is, is it's our way of being able to imitate feel, right? So instead of every single time I clap is like this, if I want to go, right? if I want to alter those hit values, then what I can do is I can alter my MIDI values, right, in terms of their velocity. And so what this will allow me to do, right, is allow me to make it some notes quieter and some notes louder. So it's really mostly useful for rhythmic emphasis. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So what I might do is I'm actually taking my decay, or rather my sustain, and turn it down. So it's less boomy. So this is the other thing I love about this, right? And this is very similar to Ableton's Simpler, right? You have the ability to shape the attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope, which is absolutely awesome. So you also have these options of doing just attack and decay, just attack and release, attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. I'm personally not a fan of the whole hold thing that you know has been introduced into digital synthesis in the last five years or so. Um, that's just me. Uh, yeah, so then what you also could do, of course, would be like a modulation matrix, right? So you could take the, for instance, an LFO, which would be right here, LFO1, which is right there. And I could click here to select the uh, target, right? So I could put it on filter one cutoff. And I could turn on my filter, turn down my cutoff. And... Uh, Turn up the amount, and you can see it wobbling. Interestingly enough, that really makes it more of a kick. That's a good question, Regine. Um, I would say it's not safe to say, but it is sometimes true. So it can change the texture of the beat, um, but it really depends on the instrument. Some mid, like a MIDI instrument, say from like Contact, will actually specifically respond with different tonal properties based on velocity sensitivity. But if you're just using a sampler like this and you're literally using a one-shot sample, right? All that it's doing is, is it's turning down the volume. Um, 
So that being said, you know, uh, at lower volumes, you're going to pick up high frequencies more. So it will, in a way, turn down, you know, it's, uh, adjust the tonal performance insofar as you'll, you'll only really perceive high frequencies and high mid frequencies more uh, on lower velocity settings. And you'll, you know, perceive the full frequency spectrum um, on other ones. So yeah, anyhow, so that's how you use that. Now, I'm actually going to turn on this filter. I'm going to turn off this LFO because I don't need it to be on. And what I'm going to do is, in order to create my 808, I'm going to crank the drive knob. I might even change this to eh, don't love it. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now what this is This is actually pretty interesting that they did this. This is really cool. So this filter blend knob basically says, do you want these filters to operate in parallel or in series? So this is going to be in series, meaning that this filter feeds this filter. And this is going to be in parallel, meaning that these two happen besides one another. And then they link up to feed out a final image, right? So if they're in parallel, this is going to allow you to choose which one it, it, it's kind of favoring. I'm going to keep it in series because that allows me to get this really crazy distortion. Now that I have this distortion, one thing that's becoming clear to me is that this is lasting too long. This is so crazy powerful. Now this 808 is honestly like enormous. Oh, I said high pass, that's why. So as you can hear, changing these filter settings, which are supposed to be modeled off of essentially synth filters, uh, is going to drastically change the, the characteristic of the distortion. So I can live with that distortion. That's pretty cool to me. Now I might actually take another distortion plugin from FabFilter, which is probably the best thing in my opinion for distorting 808s. You can get really specific. Uh, and it's called Saturn 2. And I'm going to nuke this thing. And I'm just going to nuke it right there. All right? Since so I already have quite a bit of distortion there. Now 
Now, what I'm targeting here, for any hip hop producers, is one of the upper harmonics. And the reason I'm targeting this is so that if I play on a laptop, it'll burn through. So that's gonna be that area that's gonna come through on a laptop speaker, which is really, really important for producing hip hop, right? And producing 808s just in general, if you're not doing hip hop. And now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna come in here with my transient shaper from Isotope. I guess this is kind of turning into a little 808s tutorial. Sorry. Uh, and I wanna get rid of that clickiness. So that softens it. And now I'm gonna to try to do, and hopefully this won't screw this up. Oh, it is, that's so, that's so annoying. Okay, well, I'm gonna to have to reset this, that's fine. So I'll just set this up here. Just trying to target that click. Now down here, so boomy. That's going to absolutely wreck a mix. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a disaster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on the sustain. I put it on smooth. You hear how much, how insanely boomy that is. And it's still absolutely massive. But now it doesn't overwhelm the distortion side of it. So there's that. And now I might just come in here. I'll just use logic EQ for this and just scoop out everything below 20 hertz. Tell you what, I'll actually go up to 30. Woo! That sounds fat as hell. So now we have a really clean 808. We use that, we got that from using the sampler, right? So if I want, I could also maybe filter off a little bit of the top, a little bit more, make it really round. Just give it a little bit of a 
a smoother sound. Probably even come in here, turn on the attack. So that's a nice and rich tone that I got going there now. And what I'm going to do is, so I'll save that. My 808. Now I'm going to start doing is programming some other things in using the sampler. So I'm now going to pro program in some hi-hats. Although first, actually, I'm just going to real quick throw in a clap. Which one do I like more? That's kind of sick. So we go with this one. Uh, yeah, sure, I can turn up the music volume. Just let me know if that's an issue, problem. Uh, if that's good volume, if it's too quiet, too loud. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'm gonna work on my clap now. And again, I'm gonna just for the sake of reaching for me, I might even put this up to C3 because it's just easier for me. If I can grab it right there. <laughs> so that's kind of sick actually in real time, but I'm going to do it in double time. All right. I don't know why I just played all those. All I need is two. So honestly, I only really need one. <laughs> interesting so I accidentally set my velocity range to 125 not 127 so it wasn't playing so what I'm gonna do now is come into my synth tune it down drive my filter because that makes it chunkier sounding Maybe oh, yeah, that makes sense. So I like that it was a little bit of a tighter clap. I'm kind of going for like an unnatural process sound here. Go with clap. Then I'll make another instance of sampler. Let's do kick. Let's find a cool kick to use. Probably can just use another 808 kick. Hmm. Okay, that has a little bit of nice weight to it, this one.
So I distract in this guy. So I can drop a little deeper if I want. Yeah, that's way nicer down there. So what I might just do is come into Santhan again. Just crank that drive. Not really crank it, but just give it a little bit of love. Let's make it snap here. Cool. So now I'm going to do is go ahead and try to play in some kind of... So again, I'm going to want to take all these, quantize them, and I'm just going to drag all of them up to 127 so that they're super loud. And my range, again, is not at 127, which is super annoying. So really got to make sure that range doesn't drift. Now, we have now encountered the major issue of most contemporary music production that involves electronic processes, which is you add your kick, it's too quiet, so you're like, oh, I need to turn my kick up, and then everything is clipping. So the best way to turn your kick up is really to turn everything else down. Now everything is still too loud, we're clipping super aggressively. I know I made it really quiet. Don't worry, I'm going to turn it back up. Just going to go and grab Logic's limiter. So I'm hearing some weird little squeaky noise. I wonder if that's coming from my room or the actual sample. Okay, so this is clearly terrible to use for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Fab Filter which is the best EQ in the world, at least for digital stuff. Some weird up here. Right there. Super weird. I don't know where these are coming from. Probably artifact. There we go. So the, I think these are artifacts that come from the shift in the pitch. There we go. Now, if you can hear anything up here that is in a that is like shifted, then you are under the age of 18. All right.
Now, for me, that kick is still a little weak. I know we're just messing around, you know, making stuff. But um, it's still always a good idea, at least in my opinion, if you hear a problem in the music production process, to fix it if you're able to fix it quickly. Again, I'll repeat that. If you are able to fix it quickly, right? So I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this EQ on, which is high quality but low um, latency. And I'm going to drag this to 60 hertz, which is usually a great spot to boost for a kick. I'll tell you what, that's not doing what I want it to do. So I will instead drag on this SSL EQ from SSL. They're awesome. They make their own EQs. They make their own plugins now. I'll put it down to 40. This is a shelf. So yet again, gotta turn it down. gonna leave that yeah I don't need to mess with that okay um, all right so we're running out of time because I'm having way too much fun and so also let's make sure that's still loud enough there we go very punchy very loud for you guys all right now I'm going to drag on another sampler instrument. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some very classic contemporary hi-hat vibes. So let's... All right, so I'm going to drag... Oh, there we go. Two types of hi-hats in here. First drag this one. I'm going to put this on to C2, make the range up to C3, keep this on so that they don't change in the speed. Actually, maybe not. That's messing it up pretty aggressively. Yeah, so the thing is, you know, sometimes is that, like, if it if Logic reads the sample and it thinks that uh, it's not fast enough to keep up with your current project or it's too fast, it might smear the transient. So I don't probably need to do that right now. I don't really need to worry about that. So the other one I'm going to drag in is this one under here, All right? So and I'm going to have this group be down here. So I can alternate. In between the two of these based on their ranges now if I wanted to right I could build a whole drum kit with just one single sound on each one but that's not what I'm trying to do right now right what I'm just trying to do is make like a cool hi-hat bank essentially for myself and so I like to program hi-hats I do not need to play them in I can't play them fast enough or accurately enough so you know, know your strengths. That sounds nice. 
that's really harsh when it's at that high velocity, so I'm gonna lower that. Maybe I'll just right off the bat do a roll, because rolls are pretty sick. these together now so the reason that like logic sampler is so good for making these style of hi-hats right is because you so easily have access to making these different kind of pitch ranges for doing these cool roles which have become you know so synonymous with contemporary uh, like trap production and hip-hop production now these are really harsh up top So I'm going to get roll them off a little bit. And I might even include a layer that just is doing Yeah, right there. That sound good. The full 8 hat eighth note pattern. Okay, and maybe just not waste tons of time. Sometimes I like to waste time. There we go. Now there's this new plugin that I've gotten really into from Waves called the Brower Motion plugin, which is really cool for like auto panning things. And so, so it makes things go crazy. Now that's too much. So I want to sync it. volume speed that's too fast too slow so it's moving which is intense and too much to be honest Turn the depth down. So now I have this really cool moving around the stereo field, which is not too crazy. But it feels super alive, you know?
Maybe I'll take my clap, put it out wide. Yeah, that sounds sick. That's a huge sound now. Anyway, so that is, you know, kind of in a nutshell, how to approach using the sampler in Logic. Uh, I hope that that was helpful, educational, informative for you, for everyone watching. Um, I did, of course, only talk about drums. Now, there are ways to, you know, there are a million ways to use this thing, but definitely the other way would be to also like sample an actual record so to speak uh and and um you know it really would be the same approach essentially you would find the part that you want to sample the record you're going to drag the song in and then you're going to have to use these you know bars to figure out to isolate the spot that you want um i'm really glad this was helpful becky and josh and uh yeah, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the sampler session. Now, as we continue the Logic Show, you know, over the next few weeks, like, I will definitely continue to delve into the sampler. Not every time, but, I mean, it's something that's indelible to my workflow, you know, whenever I'm producing in Logic and producing, like, really in the box. It's a super awesome thing. So, you know, I've, I'm a big fan thus far of... Um, the drum synth, which is new to Logic. I actually think it's like, there's some really cool things you can do with it. And I'm a big fan of the sampler. So going forward, I, it may be that I'll open this up uh, next time that we work, that I work, and, uh, and um, you know, continue to explore this. Um, yeah, you know, so I really, hope like i said that this was educational and helpful it seems like it was for a few of you and if that is the case and you were new tuning in today then please 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 subscribe to the 343 tv 343 labs tv uh channel and you know for those of you that may have joined a little bit late and didn't hear the intro and are joining for the first time uh this was the logic show on 343 tv and um 343 labs is a music production school based in new york city sorry about the mics there uh, based in New York City, and we also, you know, exist online, and obviously with everything that's been going on in the world, that's most of where we've been existing recently. Um, as a result, you know, we've been building up some really great content, and I'm pretty sure that you can have access to the streams, these live streams, for, you know, a period of time. I'm not positive. Double check on that. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we offer classes as well in Logic, Ableton, all the way from beginner to advanced. Um... Cool, man. Peace, John. And um, yeah, like I was saying, we offer, you know, beginner to advanced level in Logic and Ableton. Uh, we offer mixing and mastering classes. We offer vocal production class, a, uh, a new class that's going to be coming soon that I will be teaching that is on um, electronic composition theory, essentially, which is going to be a really cool and fun class. Uh, we got a bunch of other things, you know. Hopefully, if uh, the world reopens soon, we also host a lot of really cool events uh, with like master classes from recognized names in the industry and such things. Now we also just opened a school in Berlin, which is super exciting. So if you happen to be tuning in from that neck of the woods um, and you're looking, you know, learn some music production stuff, I highly encourage you to look us up in Berlin. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, please, please, please click the subscribe button. And uh, that is all for today. I will see you next week.